Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Today we're gonna jump straight into business as well. I wanna paint with you an easy forest scene that basically anyone can paint, even if you're a beginner to watercolor. This is a really fun one that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, the goal here is to convey that feeling of trees and direct sunlight in the snow. So we're gonna get started real fast. No <laughs> need to waste any time. And I'm gonna rely on two colors here to make it even easier, to make life uh, a lot easier for us and these two colors are gonna be my manganese blue hue basically any cool uh, blue should work here uh, and then I'll use my uh, cadmium red light which is basically an orange so any orange will do even if you have something like a quinacridone orange that should work an orange is uh, quinacridone orange if I'm not mistaken is quite transparent so the goal here is to get an even wash from top to bottom uh, starting with that blue with that slightly cool blue. Right now I tried arranging things so that you can actually see everything, the palette, my paper, everything. Uh, I want you to be able to really see what I'm doing here. Uh, and I'm basically feeding the paper top to bottom with this blue. Right now I feel pretty pleased with it so I can start injecting a tiny bit of orange in there. Just a bit. Now look at what happens. A lot of people are scared uh, that if you um, let these two mix together you're gonna get a weird uh, either a gray color or a, a something that doesn't look good but I want to show you something if you just take a bit of a gap and you just use that orange as you will and leave even a gap here between the two you can simply take that pure orange paint it down here right I'm gonna leave the center um, completely uh, white because there's this strong sunlight there uh, and continue moving with that pure orange down and then I can come back with a wet brush and simply connect the two areas together and you'll get some blending which is of course what we want in watercolor right but it's not gonna be too bad and you'll still be able to experience that sense of uh, heat and warmth and and everything that's really good and beautiful about this scene right so I don't want you to worry about too badly like how to mix the two um, and if you choose truly an orange and a, and a blue, they should be okay in terms of how they mix, okay? Now, as we move down, I'm gonna actually add a bit of um, a, um, quina uh, what is it? Perlin, sorry, perlin red, okay? Just near the bottom. Now, you'll notice there are some sections that are a little darker right near the bottom, and I wanna get those now. The one thing I wanna do before that is to soften that highlight in the middle but I'm not gonna go too far with softening it I'm just gonna use a damp brush that's been cleaned as you see and just make sure that it's a little blended actually it may be beneficial to come up with a slightly wetter brush than I used this time and kind of just let those edges blend right something like this the, the important thing is that I do have that kind of central slightly more well-lit area. Now, I'm gonna add a bit of my French Ultramarine here to the mix, because I have a feeling it's gonna mix really nicely to create those uh, hinted at shadows that you can kind of see spread out throughout the scene. Maybe even add a bit of my Pyrol, uh, uh, Pyrol in Red, sorry, to it. I don't know why I'm confusing the names of colors today. Let me make sure I'm still recording my face. Yeah, we're good, we're good. I may run out of space at which point I'll disappear, so forgive me for that. And look at what happens down below. There's just these beautiful, almost purple oranges, right? I said I'll use two colors, but I'm tempted now to start adding more. So I'm using my, something like a magenta. Um, and then down below, the ground is actually fairly uh, strong. It's not that light. So I'm gonna add a bit of my red and a bit of my orange and just make that ground a little stronger because we're gonna put some shadows on it and for it to really look good I need to push it just a little bit darker okay probably I can I can do darker than this so let's be brave now and put that value that we think is suitable there Go a little stronger switch to a bit more blue I'm now just trying to make the most out of these wet and wet areas right so a bit of a bluish purple kind of color right down here and I think with that we can let this dry and see what we end up with and then we'll add the trees now one thing I forgot to mention is that of course I will have a high quality photo for you to use to redraw my drawing of course it's too late now but if you're just watching it uh, you know you can uh, go ahead and, and sketch it out I want to show you also this little experiment uh, that I did here 
uh, of this color scheme just to make sure that it works ahead of time. Now, one thing that a lot of people have trouble with is foliage. Uh, and that's very understandable. There's just a lot that goes into it. So I want to show you two important factors that if you just kind of embrace those, you will be fine. First off is the value. So I want to uh, get the value accurately here. Uh, and as for the color, it's going to be some kind of a very dark brown. Uh, the the way to nail the, the color is if you just use those same color schemes we used earlier. So I'm going to put a bit of manganese. I'm going to put uh, a bit of that orange. And if you mix those together, you will get something close and then you can maybe make it darker with some neutral tint. Okay. Now, what's the difficulty about foliage and trees and all of that is that you see tons of little shapes. The magic trick for getting that right is to treat them as a shape, as one big shape. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. So let me show you. I'm going to start uh, left to right and we'll just start putting in those trees. And the way I treat them in my mind is as one shape. That's the magic trick. It's not a bunch of different branches that work separately. It's just one shape of foliage. And the way to convey that is by connecting them like you see me do here. I'm actually connecting all of them, right? This branch gets a little thicker as it moves down. And I'm going to continue. We have another tree at the back here. Now, this may even be too light, but I'm actually going to keep it like that. Worst case, I can darken it later. And I actually uh, like the way it looks now. And using this opportunity, I can add a bit of red maybe, and then start placing in those beautiful cast shadows down the bottom. So we have all sorts of beautiful random shadows. And I'm continuing with this pattern. The only tree where I'll do something a little different is this right in the middle uh, where I want to show some of the light shining through. But for the rest of it, I'm going to treat these as just same shape. And this is why I say anyone can do this. You just, this is literally, I'm going to color within the lines. There really is all there is to it, right? And you'll see how slowly this starts to make sense. Now there are branches, right? The branches are also a part of the of the shape. So you just put those branches in. You don't have to put all of them now. You can put some of them and then add maybe with a smaller brush later on, right? You won't be able to probably get all of the details now. But if you can get some of them, that's nice. Uh, and then we have these two beautiful trees that are quite close to one another. Uh, of course, brush is gonna brush control is gonna be a big part here, and if you're not as experienced, you may find it a little challenging. That's fine. I'm also merging some of the bushes and foliage behind here, uh, so that's something you just have to practice, right? But uh, as long as you uh, be a little careful, maybe work a little slower than me, but not too slow as f for the washes not to, you know. Um, to dry on you and you know dry on evenly, right? Work as, as fast as you, as 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 necessary and as slow as you can, or or vice versa, you know. So then I get to the tree branch where it actually matters. Like I'm gonna have to do something about those little, you know, the the sun rays that are coming out from that uh, area. So look at what I'm doing. I'm gonna arrive to around here. Then what I'm gonna do is just switch to a very warm color. So I'm going to add a bit of orange, but very light as well. A bit of yellow, a bit of that yellow is just um, Indian yellow. And look, I'm, I'm warming up the tree trunk like this. OK, and I'm going to paint around that light source using that fairly warm mix like that. That hints at the viewer that what we're looking at is where the, the, the light seeps in. Now let me do something here. I'm going to blend this like that and then what you can do is start lifting let me just finish the tree trunk itself uh, maybe just a bit more of that warmth down here and i'm gonna finish that tree trunk and keep it fairly wet down below so that i have enough reaction time i'm gonna take a paper towel or something like that squeeze out the water and squeeze out some sun rays okay may not be as warm as the reference for it. And this, this is the hardest technique here in this, in this entire video, right? So yes, this is going to be a challenge. Other than that, 
it's all fairly simple, trust me. Okay, so we lifted some of these shapes up. It looks already a bit like the sun is coming through. Now, I don't want to waste any more time, so what we're going to do is continue moving on with the wash. We can later come back and enhance this by lifting a bit more, okay? But remember that idea of not compromising the quality of the wash for any small detail, right? And this is just for fanciness. You don't even have to include that fancy of a shape, right? You can just, um, just keep it lighter in that area without having all of these sun rays coming through. Okay, they, that's a, just, just optional. And then we have a bunch of tree branches here. Some of them are very prominent. I, I do see them very clearly in the reference photo. Now, same thing goes here. Let's warm up this area with some warm red, maybe a bit of orange color. See that? That's very significant. That's a, that's a significant part of creating the effect. And then continue this tree branch down below. This isn't necessarily the shortest process, but it is relatively simple. And look at what we got here. We got that beautiful uh, illusion of the light shining through, right? Through those trees down the middle. Now, let's just make sure we blend that edge enough. And I'm not even going to try and attempt to mimic that pattern of sun rays. Maybe later we can do that. Uh, but for now, let's take care of those all those beautiful tree branches. You see, and you can go quite impressionistic on them, and that's a big part of the fun, you know, you don't have to draw them accurately by any stretch of the imagination. Look at how the trees, the shadows fan out, right? They start to the left, and then they move towards us, and finally they move to our right. Let me cool this off just a tiny bit and continue. And that variety and color in trees has also plays some role. You see, this is a little more blue, this is a little more gray, this is a little more red. Uh, all of this variety plays into the impression and the interest, right? A lot of it is about creating a, a feeling of interest. And then we have, of course, behind that, those layers of trees that I thought I'd get dark enough earlier, but it wasn't. So putting them in very loosely, right? Very loosely. And you can even enhance that effect by blending some of those edges if you just and go over their top. Let's try to not overdo it, but to get some of them blended, you see? Just to hint that these are misty trees that are a little in the background, right? And again, this is optional. This is kind of a fancy optional technique. You don't have to do any of that. You can keep things a little simpler if you want to. And let's just run through the last couple of tree branches. The composition here was great from the beginning, so I didn't need to change any placement of any tree, pretty much they all looked fantastic, which was fun, made things a little easier. And now if you want to exaggerate, once again, you'll grab maybe a smaller brush, something like that, kind of a rigger, because I do want to have quite a lot of branches kind of flying everywhere. So let's get this brush going a little wet. A little of everything that we have here, it's actually insisting on staying a little hard, the brush. So let's soften it up. That can happen sometimes. I mean, it happens usually every time I start to paint. I uh, just need to pre-wet them a little. Let's see what we get here. So you see all of these little twigs and little details are very important for creating that crowded, interesting impression. Uh, a lot of leaves, a lot of stuff. The only thing you want to pay attention to is don't cross that part that's well lit. Okay, that's that part should stay light because that's what creates the sense of uh, light compared to the rest of the shadows and all of that. Now, a couple of things that can be improved here. I actually really like the way it looks, but some trees are darker. I don't even have to wait for them to dry. I'm just going to start feeding some darker paint on top of them. What this is going to do is it's going to narrow down the, the lit areas into the center. So I'm going to do this mainly on the trees on the edges. So you see I get this dark, dark here in areas where it should be darker, right? Darken these trees. The, the more you can darken, the more it's going to constrain the light in the middle, right? And you can also darken the sky up top. Even, even now you can do it after everything is dried and it probably won't pick up too much of the paint. I can actually demo this because a lot of people are scared of doing this kind of a thing. And maybe a bit of darkness near the bottoms of some of the trees, even here, this central tree. Let's increase that contrast with that lit part, right? So like this, like that, top as well. 
make that contrast even stronger, even more significant, right? That makes the, the light shine much better. Um, and yeah, well, let's let this dry for a few moments and then we'll figure out what else we want to add. So this is actually a great opportunity to show you a technique that, again, a lot of people are afraid to do, uh, which is glazing. Here's the thing. I really like the values. I think we're pretty close to. Uh, the one thing I want to see is kind of a tightening up top that makes the things below look darker, so uh, uh, lighter, sorry. So I'm going to darken this and gradually fade it into the paper so that around here, this area feels even lighter. Okay, the sun, the light it casts feels lighter. Here's how to do it. Uh, the way I would like to do this is I'm going to use this uh, large groat, goat, <laughs> groat, large goat hair brush. Um, and that's going to be uh, my choice because it's soft. So it's not going to reawaken anything I have on paper too badly, right? Now, I'm going to mix that same manganese blue hue. Uh, and what we want to do is glaze on top of what we have, but with minimal touch. So I don't want to start scrubbing stuff. I want to go very light. So if I if I were to glaze, let's imagine these are trees. I were to just go like this once, once again. Once don't start scratching, scrubbing. You don't want any of that. Also, the wash is pretty. Uh, it's going to be pretty light because we don't need something too dark here. So let's move on. I'm going to tilt it at a bit more of an angle to make life a little easier. Now some of the paint may reawaken. That's fine. Don't worry about that. But as long as you preserve it to a minimum of touching, you should be good. I'm going to move my way down. And then as we get to the center, I'm going to switch gears and just use water. Just clean, good old water to make sure I blend that line. And that I don't get a hard, weird, awkward edge. Okay? Oh, that's gonna be it. And I think this is all we need. Now I can use a piece of tissue just to kind of fade some areas of the line, but you have to be careful, like I wasn't here because I smeared some of the tree, right? But other than that, you're not running too bad of a risk. You just have to let this dry. In fact, I'm gonna even go like that because I don't want a hard edge to be created where I stopped, okay? I'm gonna take it one step further, actually. I'm gonna use a hair dryer to dry it a little faster, okay? So here is the final result. And funny enough, I wasn't even planning. It did reawaken some of the tree, tree trunks, but that actually played in our favor because it helped to further darken the top. And I think it really looks good. It constrained the light within this thin section. And you get to see how that effect of a strong light uh, unfolds in front of you because it's all about constraining the highlight in one small space and then contrasting it with something seemingly darker that actually turns lighter due to the light and, and it really makes gives you that feeling that the light comes through the tree trunks makes them almost transparent in a way right how did it make sense uh, one thing that i will note as for technique and then we'll remove the tape while i was drying this with my hair dryer i noticed a few slightly hard edges and what i did was actually use my finger while it was drying like going like this with the hair dryer and using the fingers just to make sure to soften it as it dries. So just a quick trick for you if that's something that you ran into, you know, using your fingers can really help in blending edges sometimes. It's not a perfect uh, technique, but it is one way of avoiding too hard edges. Uh, and this really, I do believe this is a scene anyone can paint. First wash that's basically gradual from blue to orange to red, slightly dark near the bottom, and then one layer that is one big shape of trees on top of it with turning things here a little uh, well lit. I am curious to see your results, so be sure to send them over if you try this. If you run into specific problems, I'm always happy to hear, of course, uh, and, and to address those. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Once again, thank you so much. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, share this video if, if you know anyone that it would help. And don't forget to check out my frustration-free drawing course. Link in the description box below. My watercolor realism course is on the way. It's gonna be out hopefully soon. Um, and the drawing course as well. You'll find everything in the description box below. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again real soon.